and welcome to this episode of the Quaff Cafe. Tonight I am so excited to be coming to you with a wonderful shea butter aloe whip mix that you can use for your hair and your body. But first I want to give a shout out and a huge thank you to Dwafe Naturals coming out of Maryland. Thank you so much for sponsoring this show and our two DIY kit uh, basket giveaway. I think I'm more excited about the giveaway um, than anything else. But they sent me all of the ingredients to share this recipe with you and I'm just delighted to be able to come to you with this DIY mix for a very light um, but good moisture sealant for your body and your hair. Um, just really quick, this mix has some uh, ingredients in it that are moisturizing but for the most part it is it should be used as a moisture sealant so right after you get out of the shower you want to put some on or right after you get done um, with your hair adding a leave-in or just adding um, or spraying a water mix on your hair you want to use this as a sealant to, to seal in the moisture so really quick, we're gonna go through the ingredients and then we are gonna start mixing. So in this shea butter aloe body whip mix, saints, we have eight ounces of aloe butter. We have three ounces of shea butter. We have some castor oil, one ounce of castor oil and one ounce of olive oil. And we also have some rosemary um, that, that's optional. So we're gonna go through the ingredients. The aloe butter is a um, concoction. It's a fraction, Lord Jesus, see? I have notes, so it's okay. Um, it is a soy fraction, meaning that aloe oil is added to soybean oil. Now, this is not Crisco. However, this is the natural version of Crisco, if you will, soybean oil. Soybean oil is very light. It's a great carrier oil. Um, and it's inexpensive that you can use to make any type of your skin creams or your hair creams. It really is a great product. Um, and the aloe oil is very moisturizing. Aloe in general is a great moisturizer that you can use for your hair and your skin. Aloe straight from the plant can be used as an antibacterial and an antifungal um, ingredient to use on cuts and scrapes. Um, always do a skin patch test because some people do have an allergy to aloe. But this is our whipped aloe butter. And then we have three ounces of melted shea butter. And this is raw, unrefined shea butter. And that means it's just coming straight from the shea nut. There is no processing to uh, remove any of the, uh, the smell, all of the nutrients. Everything is high quality. It's still within this shea butter. Shea butter has so many uses. uses um, it's gentle enough for babies. Shea butter is a wonderful sealant for moisture. So if you're ashy, I wouldn't necessarily recommend shea butter because it would primarily just sit on top of your skin. But right out of the shower, you slap on uh, shea butter by itself, you are, you are protected from the elements all day long. This is also great for if you have uh, eczema or any other uh, skin conditions, it's very mild. We also have here one ounce of castor oil. Castor oil is also an antifungal uh, ingredient that can be used on uh, psoriasis, any kind of skin problems. It's just really great for balancing um, an overproduction of fungus on your scalp or on your skin. It can be thick sometimes, so I would recommend that you, if you're, if you're using this by itself, probably mix a little bit of um, olive oil to kind of stretch it out. Then we have our 
olive oil, which is one of few oils that actually gets absorbed in the hair and is considered moisturizing. Typically, oils are not considered moisturizing. They are considered sealants because they coat the hair after moisture has been added to lock in moisture. But olive oil is a very good moisturizing ingredient. So now that brings us to rosemary. Rosemary is a natural preservative. And it also, um, I've read uh, it from different blog posts and just exchanging with uh, conversations, exchange with other naturals, that rosemary also helps with hair growth and hair, uh, or in uh, scalp stimulation. So it, it helps with hair growth, thinning areas, um, alopecia, and the likes. Now, I do want to caution you about the rosemary. For this particular mix, it is optional because the ingredients that you're mixing, they don't go rancid or they won't go bad after combining. But um, you can add rosemary as a way to extend the shelf life. However, if you are nursing, if you're a nursing mother, if you're pregnant, or you're wanting to get pregnant, I would recommend that you not use the rosemary because it, it can be toxic and um, to, to the baby, and it's just not really good for pregnant women or women who are wanting to become pregnant. So the rosemary is optional, but it is a natural preservative that you can use to extend the, the shelf life of this recipe. So we are going to go ahead and mix eight ounces of the aloe butter. We're just gonna combine all of this into a, a bowl here. And you can already see that it's already a, a, a pretty good consistency. Almost like, what is it, the watercress salad that you have at the fancy black people weddings? That in frappe? The sherbet with the uh, sherbet and, and, and Sprite. And you know if they were able to mix the sherbet, the different sherbet colors, still maintain the green and the orange essence within the frappe, they were really, really doing something. This is almost like fluff. The marshmallow, that marshmallow spread, it's almost a consistency of that. So we have the aloe butter. And let me recommend that you use all plastic. Whenever you're mixing anything, use plastic uh, utensils. I know on some of the recipes I've used metal, but when you learn better, you do better. So we have all eight ounces, well for the most part, eight ounces of our aloe butter fac uh, fraction. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pour all three ounces of this melted shea butter right on top. You're probably wondering why I have two bowls here. Well, the one bowl is deep enough where I know I'm gonna get a good mix, because sometimes when you're mixing, if you use something that's too wide and shallow, you don't really get a good mix. But this little bowl is also flimsy, so I put it inside of a, a, a more sturdy bowl. Alrighty. So I have the shea butter and the aloe butter uh, fraction mixed. Words the rise. Put your hand blender inside the mixture first, then turn it on. So I'm going to start on low first. Kind of like um, 
icing, cake icing, a really thick cake icing. So I'm going to sit this over on the side on the gloves that I was supposed to put on. And I'm going to go ahead and add the full one ounce of, this is the olive oil. And olive oil can be kind of thinning when you're doing your recipes of any kind. So just be sure that you add a little bit at a time with your mixes because you don't want to run the risk of making it too thick. Although you could just add more of your shea butter or aloe butter. And we're going to go ahead and add the full ounce of the castor oil. And castor oil is much thicker than the olive oil. And we're going to mix again. We're mixing on low. when you're adding stuff like this. So we're actually going to add, this is equivalent probably to about, I would say about six or seven drops. So we're gonna add that in there. And if you like me, I like woodsy, woodsy uh, scent. Is that, I don't know if that's a word. It's a word today. We're gonna mix this back in here. And this time we're gonna go ahead and mix it on high. And there you have it, folks. 
our Shea Aloe Butter Body Whip Hair Whip that can be used. Um, listen, if you have any questions about this recipe or any of our other past episodes, feel free to send me a line at quaffedcafe at gmail.com. Again, I want to thank Dwafe Naturals for sponsoring this show and our giveaway. Uh, we'll have all of their information at the end of this video as well in the description box. Go by, check them out, and until next time, holla! <laughs>